America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. Since Donald Trump's election victory, we have heard a lot of talk that his hardline stance on immigration could hurt the United States technology sector. So we're asking, as workers around the world look for friendlier shores, is Canada reaping a brain gain? And to be blunt, Canada is in a unique position now to leverage what some are calling our immigration advantage. So is Canada actually in a stronger position because of Trump? What's really going on there? Well, we asked our business reporter, Rene Filipponi, to drill down into that. And uh, Rene, the numbers tell a big part of the story here. You've got some new ones from Immigration Canada. Yeah, well, Andrew, tech immigration so far this year is on track to meet and what we know now is very likely beat last year's numbers. So over the past decade, there has been an overall increase in tech sector immigration, nearly doubling, in fact, since 2007. So now we have the numbers for the first eight months of 2017 since Trump was elected. And for that time period, nearly 7,000 people have come to Canada, almost as many as last year, and there are still four months to come. Hmm. And, and how do we know that Trump is the one driving that influx? Yeah, it's difficult to track that motivation, but immediately following Trump's victory and his inauguration, there were big spikes in interest in Canadian tech job postings. And there's more recently a survey of 150 Toronto tech companies. 62% see, say they saw more American applicants this year. Wow. So... Uh, to go deeper, I presume you'd have to talk with folks who are actually making the move. So what did you find there? Yeah, I met with two people, very compelling stories. Vikram Ragnakar is originally from India. He spent the last six years in Silicon Valley on a temporary working visa tied to his job at LinkedIn. He moved to Toronto just over a year ago. And Petra Axatolo was working for Twitter in Singapore, but that country doesn't recognize her same-sex partner, and they're looking to start a family and wanted to move. Have a listen to why Petra and Vikram both decided against the U.S. Well, the plan was to actually move back to the U.S. after uh, my, my stay in Singapore. But then, well, things happened. Well, one thing was, of course, Donald Trump became president. And, uh, well, that actually, that was a trigger for me to sort of think, think more, well, whether there's that, a better plan than, than the United States. The visa regulations that U.S. imposes are quite uh, restrictive, especially to people born in certain populous countries. Uh, and, um, and that kind of puts them on a track to, to, uh, to wait for like a green card. It, t it basically takes them 20 plus years to get a green card. He always says, well, make America great again, but actually I think he's making Canada pretty great. Okay, so uh, they crossed the U.S. off their list, but, you know, in turning to Canada, I mean, we're close by, but why come here specifically? Uh, well, for one, Andrew, the Canadian tech sector is, is booming, and over the past five years, labour growth in the sector has been double the rest of the Canadian economy. So there are jobs, but these are very highly skilled ones. Still, however, Vikram and Petra say they had to weigh the pros and cons. I submitted my application for permanent residence in June, end of June, and it got approved in August. I remember this quote one friend of mine said. He said, uh, Toronto is the best kept secret in North America. I, I recommend people get a parka. I know Canada has uh, a uh, points-based immigration system, which in my opinion is just so much more rational than, than any lottery-based system. People from Toronto have always been, why are you choosing Toronto? It's so expensive here. I was like, hey, you guys have never tried California. It's true that I did have to take um, some salary cut, especially on an on, on after-tax basis. But I really think, um, still, uh, all in all, it, it, it has been a great decision so far. Someone I was speaking to, and he actually asked me if there were, like, polar bears there and stuff. So uh, I told him yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are somewhere, just not Toronto. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, after hearing Vikram, hopefully the immigration numbers don't drop. <laughs> uh, so, so I understand it was just weeks to get approval to work here. How, how is that the case? Yeah, for Petra's case, she came under this pilot program called the Global Skills Strategy, or GSS, and that was launched in June to bring in talent in just a matter of weeks. And the CBC News has obtained some early numbers from that program. So in just the first two and a half months, the government received more than 2,000 applicants for these temporary work permits and said yes to 
1,600 or 80% of the applications. So, Andrew, that's a lot of people in a short period of time, many destined for the tech sector. And these are people who may not have been looking to Canada if it weren't for what was going on in the U.S. Okay, very interesting stuff. Thanks a lot, Renee. You're welcome.